Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you here. An elite group. Welcome to the Joby breakout. I hope this is where you, you intended to be. Yes, we got okay. We got almost uh, 130 of you and, and growing. Uh, my name is David Roberts. I'm one of Brandon's colleagues. Um, uh, I am a co-founder of The Difference, a consulting company who does lots and lots of work like this, and um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, we are still seeing our numbers grow. This is again the Joby, uh, the Joby breakout. We're at you know 160 or so. Um, we're going to spend some time here with you. And um, what I would encourage you to do is to jump into chat. This is actually just a Zoom call. Yesterday, if you did the um, if you did the breakouts with us, we were in webinars, which is different because you have a Q and A function and a chat function. In this, you just have a chat function. So I would love it uh, if folks in the chat could just type in, why did you choose this room? You might even say where you're, where you're typing in from. I'm in Santa Cruz, California, um, myself. Um, but uh, why did you choose this room? Why did you, hello from Minnesota, DC. Um, Paul's not gonna show more slides, um, but I think one way to kind of get us started is just type in why, why this room? What are you interested in? Um, so as you're joining, Got 183 of us in the Joby room here. And just to note, you folks won't be able to unmute yourselves. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so folks are interested in the design, want to learn about Joby's needs, kind of more about the process of where Joby is right now. David, um, you're a faster read than I am. <laughs> I know these are smoking through. <laughs> um, and so you can really start wherever you want. And um, Paul, through this, so here's the process 15 minutes, we're just going to have some. Um, Paul's going to chat, and I'm going to kind of intersperse with him based on what I'm seeing. Um, and then we're going to split you got folks into breakouts where you're going to have a little more discussion. I'll explain what that looks like. But, sure. Paul, I might pass it over to you now, and I think start anywhere. And then uh, I'll be, I'll, um, don't, don't worry about the chat anymore. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll have a back channel with one of my colleagues and I'll, I'll, I'll poke, poke a couple of questions at you in, you know, a couple minutes, but so start wherever you want. Assume everybody saw your slides. They saw your fire starter. What more do you want to share? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, obviously I want to thank everyone um, that's spending some time this morning uh, on in, in, in this breakout session. Uh, talking a little bit about uh, the future, obviously, in a very sort of difficult present. Um, I, uh, I probably don't have too much to add um, uh, in addition to the slides that we talked about. Um, as mentioned, you know, Joby has been, I think, a sort of leader um, in this broad category of electric aviation for going on 10 years. Um, my involvement uh, started around six and a half years ago um, as one of the first outside investors in the company when it was really quite small, only five folks. Um, and uh, have been very closely involved um, in a lot of the work that we've done since on the vehicle design that I believe I shared a little bit of color on before. Um, as mentioned from the outset, we've really been squarely focused on solving what is really a sort of consumer problem, um, and that's this problem of regional congestion. Uh, to us, there are finally the enabling building blocks, things like sufficiently energy-dense batteries, um, sufficiently torque dense electric motors, and now a number of sort of new lightweight materials, including carbon fiber uh, and 3D printed metal, that actually allow for the first time the delivery of a vehicle that has interesting enough commercial operating specifications that it can solve the consumer problem at over time sort of uh, improved cost. Uh, so happy to sort of open it up now, I guess to yeah. Paul, so one of the policy. things that one of the things is kind of a general question, but a lot falls underneath it. Um, what have been the big lessons learned for you that you're applying into the future? What are the things that kind of might have surprised you or you didn't kind of know what was going to happen and, and you've learned through it? Uh, well, there are a few things, um, and I'll speak one sort of personally and then a, a, a one kind of for the company more broadly. Um, you know, first, uh, obviously, coming from a software background, um, it turns out hardware is hard. Uh, the development cycles are long. The capital intensity is really quite high. It actually provides, as a company, I think with a fair bit less wiggle room for mistakes. 
um, than kind of developing a software product, which is certainly my background. Um, so that's sort of the personal side of things. Yeah. I think when it comes to um, lessons learned on the company side, look, our big concern in the early days was on the regulatory side. Um, there was big open questions around whether or not the FAA would get on board with streamlined approaches for the certification of new technologies that are going to be involved in any of these vehicles, but particularly our vehicle. Those include, obviously, electric motors for propulsion, um, large format lithium ion battery systems for energy storage. And I think the, 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 the frank surprise has been the level of engagement um, with the FAA. Um, oh. They've really been great partners uh, as we've uh, begun to work really closely with them on the certification basis of the aircraft. Um, so I think that was really sort of a pleasant surprise <clears throat> uh, after being, uh, frankly, like a, a little bit initially daunted yeah. by the process of moving through the type certification process. Yeah. A um, few folks are asking about sort of you to say a little bit more about the battery power and range and recharge time, kind of what you're finding there. Yeah. So I think I highlighted the range targets in the slides. I, I mean, our, we, we sort of view an optimal solution here. Uh, to be one that is good, suitable for short trips, um, trips that are somewhere around sort of two miles, so downtown, you know, sort of within cities, but also vehicle, a vehicle that can deliver these longer trips. Those may be city to city pairs, and that requires a range that's significantly longer. Um, so uh, our uh, specifications around 150 miles of range, less the FAA mandated reserve, felt like the right point um, uh, felt like the right set of specifications in order to deliver both sides of that. Um, we're not getting into a lot of details around the charge time, uh, the particular battery cells and other things. Um, I think folks can expect some additional information around some of those features uh, as we move into the later part of the year. Yeah, great. Um, the other thing uh, folks are asking about noise levels um, you anticipate, what are you thinking there? Yeah, so as I mentioned in the outset, you know, the, the three goals for the vehicle were first, ensuring that it was safe, second, ensuring that it was quiet, and then finally making sure that it was economical. Um, and those are really in rank order. So for us, noise sits right below safety yeah. in terms of what we think is gonna be important for delivering the service that we care about. Um, this is only gonna work if you're able to site takeoff and landing locations really close to the places that people wanna go. And fundamentally, that's a question that's driven by the overall noise profile of the vehicle. Um, so I believe we shared uh, a less than 70 dB during at 250 feet during takeoff and land. And then once the vehicle transitions into forward flight, power requirements drop significantly and in turn the noise profile drops significantly. So at 500 feet to a thousand foot flyover, um, this is a vehicle that is near silent. And we think wow. both of those pieces, the noise profile during takeoff land and in turn the noise profile during cruise are really important in terms of getting the uh, service done correctly. Great. And right now, um, I think folks are folks who saw your slides and who are kind of uh, validating what they understood. Is the range 150 miles and 200 MPH? Is that kind of the general? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, and then anything else you want to say about energy efficiency of the battery? Um, uh, nothing in particular that we want to say. Yeah. Uh, obviously, <laughs> Obviously, when you think about these systems, and it goes for our vehicle, it goes for any vehicles in the category, look, fundamentally, it's a, it's a weight-constrained system. Um, so a lot of effort has to be spent on the efficiency of moving electrons from those batteries all the way out to the tip props, and then in turn on weight reduction uh, in terms of the rest of the vehicle. Yeah. Um, hence the use of carbon fiber and primary and secondary structure around the vehicle. Um, and also the use of things like 3D printed metal. Great. Um, uh, question here around um, the maintenance piece of it. Um, is it expensive? Is it harder maintenance? What's been your, what's sort of your view on maintenance of these? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, and I think some of those are going to have to be really answered by true operational experience, um, which is, which are, uh, which are on the roadmap as we think about the next 12 to 24 months. Yeah. But look, as we take, as we take examples from the ground transportation side of things, look, electric motors, uh, distributed electric propulsion and aircraft should deliver a significantly lower maintenance profile 
um, than traditional turbine uh, driven aircraft and certainly combustion driven aircraft on the other side. Um, it's going to be up to us to obviously prove those numbers out in the real world, um, but that's been our supposition going in. Um, I'll say as well that given the overall redundancy of the vehicle, we do think we're going to be able to deliver a lower a maintenance, a less rigorous maintenance plan than certain other aircraft that have large number of single points of failure. Um, but obviously a lot of that will have to be proven out as we move forward. Yeah. Um, a bunch of questions have come in just about the Toyota sort of relationship and, you know, what are the implications for that? And I know probably a lot of that you want to keep to yourself, but what can you sort of share with these folks who are in the industry and really curious to know how does that impact what you're doing, how you connect in with the government, that kind of your view of the future, et cetera. Can you speak on that for a moment? Yeah, of course. Um, so we obviously announced the uh, uh, investment from the folks at Toyota uh, in the early part of January. Um, and that investment was preceded by a long process of them getting to know us and in turn us getting to know them. Um, I think fundamentally, we were really excited about bringing them on as, a, as, as an investment partner in the company um, because we think they have a few things that are really similar to what's important for us. Um, one, I think they view over the long arc, uh, they've got a sort of similar vision to what the future of mobility looks like. Um, they view that future as being one that is largely sort of multimodal. It's gonna be around connecting people from different ground transportation modes to aerial modes, and to do that in a really seamless way. Um, so we felt really good about the sort of strategic alignment over the long term um, with them as a partner. And then lastly, they've committed to bring significant resources to bear um, in order to assist us on the manufacturing side. Um, and we're just now beginning to explore what that looks like. And I think there are gonna be some uh, more substantive announcements about what that um, looks like in relatively short order. Um, as I mentioned, we're right now beginning the planning for the uh, manufacturing facility, the first manufacturing facility for the vehicle. Um, and we're excited to have Toyota as a partner in terms of thinking about how we can do that in a really successful way. Nice. Um, yeah, congratulations on that. I remember reading that in my local paper. Uh, Santa Cruz is very excited when that came through. Um, We're excited too. Uh, yeah, I bet. So, but you mentioned safety. Safety is first. Are there things, um, what are the biggest um, sort of dangers? Somebody had written in, you know, you're going to be flying over big cities. You know, what are the safety things that are, are trickiest to solve and what are the ones you feel like you're, you're pretty confident around? Well, I, I think that you know, look, safety is going to be important, important not only for um, the FAA certification process, which is obviously a necessary uh, step in order to get to uh, commercial launch from the civilian side of things, but also in terms of customer adoption. That's customer adoption in terms of the riders, but also the cities and the munici municipalities in which we operate. Um, so from the very beginning, we wanted to make sure that this was a vehicle that was designed in a safe way. And that fundamentally means redundancy. So redundancy in terms of the overall architecture of the vehicle, um, in the event that there are failures in individual stations, it's a vehicle that continue to operate in nominal fashion, but also redundancy in uh, the subsystems that sit under that vehicle. Um, if you take a look at commercial aviation, um, that has shown the benefits uh, of redundancy in terms of delivering greater safety. Like commercial aviation has generally um, a really great track record. And a lot of that is driven by the fact that there are zero single points of failure across most commercial systems. So we're trying to take that same thinking, uh, obviously now in a smaller vehicle. Uh, and we think that's gonna be really important in terms of delivering the right safety profile um, to get these vehicles into large commercial service. That's great. All right, so this is, um... This, this breakout is, is time compressed. It's, this is sort of like the speed date and not the date. And there's so many good questions here. Um, if folks wanna know more, what is the best way that, for them to engage? A lot of really good questions about, about, about the technology, about some of what you found, um, which some of which you probably may wanna answer, some you may not, but what's the best way for them to engage with your team uh, post session or maybe even during session, is it? Uh, well, uh, well, for at least some of the participants in this chat, we are still hiring. Um, there's okay. a very long list of uh, job openings um, that are on the Joby site. Excellent. And you know, we're continuing to in forward invest, um, particularly as we start to move from a stage of prototyping into one that's now far more focused on commercialization, including the testing required for certification, manufacturing, and initial commercial deployments. Um, so 
that's obviously a, a way that at least certain folks, I think, can get involved. Um, you know, we have been uh, relatively quiet about the work that we're doing. Yeah. Um, but we're beginning to, I think, get to a point where we're ready to release a little bit more information, not only about the vehicle, but about our plans going forward. So folks should just kind of stay tuned, um, particularly over the course of the next 12 months, because um, I suspect there's going to be a bunch of news that is interesting to a lot of the folks that are on this um, chat uh, over that stretch. Yeah, I suspect it is, especially by the way you're, you're smiling. Well, it's very, very cool um, to, to, to hear... Um, you know, at this time, global pandemic, lots of uncertainty, but to see this growth and to see the excitement and what you're doing and innovating is really cool. And to see, I'm just looking at the chat, there's just so much interest in, in continuing dialogue. And like you said, folks, check the site. If you're interested in knowing about a job, check the website, the Joby site. Um, I wanna thank you. We're gonna, we, Evelyn, will you put up the next slide, please? Sure, one second. Um... I wanna thank Paul for, um, for just, just, talking about this for a second, what we found is that um, it's so useful to allow you to not only hear what he's saying and you've seen the slides, but also then digest it and say, so what, is, what does this mean to us? Um, so we are gonna uh, get you into sub breakouts and it will just be people who have been in this room. So Zoom has this breakout feature and we're gonna invite you, we're gonna send you to a room um, where you will- Am I uh, sharing the right thing? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Looks great. Three steps. Um, you're going to be in there with like one or two, three other people. You're going to uh, introduce step one, introduce yourself and talk about what folks should consider the leaders of the flying car companies and agility prime. What should they consider doing as they build the transportation future? So quick conversation. Step one is share the answer to this question. And actually, folks, if you want to take a picture of this or a screenshot of this um, assignment, please do. Because um, it's three steps and it's not going to be in your area. So step one, talk about yourself and what do you see is required for flying cars. Step two is to memorialize the breakout. So get a screenshot or a photograph um, of your team. And then step three is to share the message about your discussion. So go to Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook and just share with the hashtag Agility Prime or info at agilityprime.com. The intent here is to get as much learning and as much dialogue as we can possibly get around this topic. Um, and so when you get into these, it's a three-step process. Um, first, again, it's short, five or six, seven minutes to share about yourself and come up with a point of view on what should car companies and Agility Prime be doing? What should they be considering? Uh, and then, um, take a photo or a screenshot and then link it up. You're gonna end up back in here with us in about 10 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna send you off into these small... Wow, okay, more good questions here. So we will capture all these questions uh, and, and hang on to them. Um, we wanted just to give you folks a chance to chat. Hopefully you met somebody who was interesting. If you ended up in a room by yourself, I apologize <laughs> if you ended up you know, this is an imperfect um, art, but because um, just because people dropped maybe. But uh, I know there was some really good dialogues. I was a part of a really good dialogue myself, um, really thinking about um, the importance of um, information systems and navigation systems, um, you know, the, the safety considerations around this stuff. We kind of got into it pretty deep really quickly. So I'm going to post, uh, I encourage you to post up to, um, up to uh, LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, and, and, or Twitter and, and post what you had, what you talked about, just kind of some takeaway. Uh, we're gonna shift back into Agility Prime right now. So I'm gonna type it into the chat. Agilityprime.com is where we're going to come back and uh, reconvene with folks. Uh, Evelyn, do we do it right now? Is that right? Yeah, well, he said 9, uh, 12.35 Eastern. So if you just wanna- you have like 90 seconds to uh, grab a cup of coffee if you'd like, but we'd love to see everybody back in the main space. We are going to kind of debrief some of what we heard from these folks. Um, our, our, uh, our philosophy is to err on the side of speed um, and keeping people really engaged and clear on the discussion. So um, I hope that this was a good little nugget, little speed date to not only learn about Joby, but maybe meet somebody interesting uh, who's thinking about the same kind of stuff that you stuff that we are. So um, we're going to close out this room. Um, Evelyn, anything else that we need here? 
No, thank you for participating. Thanks everybody so much for coming by and uh, we'll see you later this week.